All right, welcome to another Creative TD production. Uh, in this video, we are going to be covering how to use effects maps inside of Substance Designer 2. Uh, effects maps are, are really good, great nodes to use uh, when you're trying to generate your own pattern. Um, and you don't want to actually use reference uh, photographs or textures to um, assemble your, your pattern inside of Designer. So in this particular graph, what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, a pattern like this, or exactly like this, and we're going to uh, actually output a normal map from that. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to right click on my package there and I am going to double click that. So to start this, what you want to do is you want to hit the space bar and drop down an effects map. All right, and we'll double click on that so we can see the output here in the 2D view. Uh, and I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this to false. That way we don't have the alpha, uh, the color mode to false, right? And uh, since we're also we're doing a uh, a normal map, we just need grayscale values, anyways. Okay. So now what we can do is we can actually edit uh, the patterns in here. Okay. And to do that, what you need to do is you actually need to get into and edit the effects map. So you can actually hit Control E, or you can just right click on the node itself and say Edit Effects Map. So now you're inside the parameter graph here, which is defines the nodes that will make up our effects map pattern. All right, so now initially every, every effects map will come with one quadrant node set as the root uh, node. So this is the final output, if you will. So root means that it is the final output, and that's indicated by the fact that this is actually orange or orangish yellow. All right, so inside of a quadrant node, what you can do is you can actually define a pattern. And we do that by coming over to the pattern property drop down here. And we can select a whole bunch of different types of basic shapes that we can use to build up our pattern that we want to create for our texture. Okay, and so what I want to do is I just want to kind of go over and start to explain the concept of what these quadrants do. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, put down, I'm going to select the paraboloid pattern right there. And you'll notice now we actually have a, a circle in the middle of our pattern. Or actually it looks like kind of like a shaded uh, ball, if you will. Um, what you can do now is you can actually start to uh, subdivide this image um, into more quadrants, right? So what we can do is Right now, what we have is we have a, a single quadrant node right up here. And so that defines this as the single quadrant. The whole texture is actually one big quadrant. Okay, So we only have one quadrant in our texture. If I were to actually drop down another quadrant node by hitting spacebar and selecting quadrant, what I can do is I can take the output of this new quadrant node and put it into one of the inputs for the root quadrant node. And what I can do then in, inside this new quadrant, I can actually define a pattern. And that actually creates another uh, shaded ball or circle, but in this upper, the upper corner of this texture. And that's because now what we've done with this new quadrant node, so we've taken the initial quadrant and we've subdivided it into four more quadrants. So let's just see that actually happen. So now we have four more quadrants. And now if I add in another quadrant node, each one of these quadrants will be subdivided into four quadrants. Let's do that. Let's set this to paraboloid. And there you go. And it goes so on and so on and so on. You can add as many of these quadrants, um, I believe, as you, as you like. All right, so that will form the basis for um, our texture right there. That we're, or our pattern that we're going to be creating. So what I'm going to do is I'm uh, just going to delete these. So you can just select these connectors here and just delete. We will need all three of these, so I'm just going to leave them there. What I want to do is I actually want to set the first quadrant to a square. And you'll notice that the square actually fills up the whole texture, and that's not exactly what I want. I want a little bit of a border around it, okay? So what you can do is you can come into pattern size, and you can decrease that pattern size. Go to 0.95 for that. So now I have a nice little border around my, my square. And then I'm going to plug in the, the next quadrant, and I'm going to set those to square. All right. 
and I will decrease my size for these guys. So these will have to be something a little bit less. A little bit less than the, uh, the top quadrant node there. There you go. And then finally I'm going to plug in my last quadrant. And I'm going to actually keep it as paraboloid. And I'm going to decrease the size of these guys to 0.5. Um, just because I, I know that works. All right. So there you go. So, but if you don't want to have, you know, four paraboloids in each quadrant, well, you can just, again, just delete these guys, and you can actually keep whichever ones you guys choose. So I'm just going to leave them there for now. For now. All right. So that actually completes our effects uh, map. So what we can do is we're going to come out to the graph view where we have our effects map, and I'm going to go up to the advanced filters uh, package up here and go into the normal map uh, folder. And what I want to do is pull out the normal mapper. And I'll feed the output of the effects map into the input of the normal mapper. And I get normals. But unfortunately, um, since this is outputting a color value, we have a, a, an alpha of zero. So we're actually getting um, no background. So what, we can do a quick way we can actually fix that was we can actually use a channel shuffle. So I'm going to feed the output of the normal mapper into the channel shuffle and I'm going to create a uniform color. I'm going to feed that in. Now the channel shuffle allows you to take any channel from these two color inputs right here and assign them to build a new um, RGBA image. All right and so what I want is from the alpha channel from number two, from the number two um, color input. I want to actually put that for my alpha channel. So now I get a normal map that has a proper background. All right. And then inside of our normal mapper, what I want to do, I'll just leave that selected here. I want to uh, increase the intensity here to about 50. That'll make something that we can actually use. All right. And the last step that you do is just to uh, put down an output node, like so, and you set it to normal. And that is how, that is a simple, ver simple way of using an effects map, but a good introduction uh, for people who haven't used them yet. So uh, hopefully you uh, learned something in this, and uh, I will be diving deeper into these effects maps um, and creating more dynamic functions so we can actually get some really advanced effects. So uh, we will continue this video tutorial series um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions you can always email me at kennyl at creativetd.com or just visit my website at www.creativetd.com. Thank you very much.